Kishore, Jean-Marie, Bill Fallon, you were around when there was the Cuba crisis in 62. Do you have a memory of that crisis or not at all? I mean, I, I was uh, 14 years old. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I, I, I do have a memory of that crisis and uh, I do have a sense of how much danger the world was in. And I also do have a feeling that in 2022, we are coming close to 1962. I was five years old when at uh, the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. But I do remember quite vividly the fear uh, of people at that time, the fear of Armageddon. We, you know, we, were, we took absolutely seriously the possibility that this was the end. And a memory that I have that had a profound influence on me personally was um, watching the television and the great British philosopher Bertrand Russell was on television. Um, he had given up philosophy in order to campaign against nuclear weapons. And he'd, he'd um, uh, started a, a thing called the Committee of 100, which took the work of the uh, uh, CND, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, and working towards the same ends, but adopting different means, he encouraged civil dis disobedience. And I remember him on the television, on the, on the, on, on the streets of Whitehall, encouraging a mass sit-down uh, uh, against the law. And a reporter asked him, you know, Lord Russell, why, why are you doing this? And Russell, who had this extraordinary voice, nobody has spoken English like Russell since the 18th century. Um, Russell said, well, if the policies of the present governments are to, are, are, are to be continued, they will inevitably result in the complete annihilation of humankind. And he said, and some of us think that might be rather a pity. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, largely because of that, you know, a few years later, I, I, I joined the uh, uh, CND and, and uh, campaigned for nuclear disarmament. Uh, first of all, I think that Putin's uh, uh, trying to scare people. Uh, in my opinion, this is what it's all about. He's, uh, he wants to uh, push back and to deter uh, NATO countries and others from continuing to support Ukraine. And so if he scares people, then they will back off. So I think that's, that's the real motivation. How much he's really thought about it, I don't know. The dangerous part of this is that it appears that the Russian military, um, with whatever support and uh, backing or instigation they have from their political leaders, have this uh, nuclear calculation in their war fighting ideas. So at what point they may decide that they ought to do this, I, I have no idea. Uh, that's the danger to me. There is not going to be a general exchange, nuclear exchange between Russia and the West because deterrence does work. I was one of the officials who um, declassified Warsaw Pact documents. I declassified the Polish part. We were the second army of the Warsaw Pact for a general invasion of uh, Western Europe. And uh, Soviet forces were going to nuke Germany, they were going to nuke uh, Denmark, and they were nuke, going to nuke Holland but not France and the UK. Guess why? Because France and the UK are nuclear powers. Deterrence works. Putin is not going to nuke us. What the danger is that he might nuke a country that voluntarily gave up its nuclear weapons, Ukraine. Ukraine. And, and, and it's a much harder question uh, to ask, you know, how to prevent that. It's actually quite easy. The best way to prevent a nuclear war over Ukraine is for Russia not to start it. Nobody else will do it, and nobody else is threatening it. Now, how do we deter Putin from attacking a non-nuclear state? That's the real issue.